Okay, we're going to do another Nintendo top loader video, but this time it's a little different. We're going to take one that's already been AV modded and make it a component output top loader. I had, a, I had a customer send me this one for the AV mod. He also had the LED and he also had the stereo switch uh, mod put in. And as you can see, there is nothing in the RF out hole. So, because it's already had the AC jack or the RF, RCA jacks installed, we were kind of debating on how we were going to put component in here. So, we decided we were just going to stick with the RCA jacks. And what I'm going to do is take out the uh, yellow, red, and white jacks and install red, green, and blue jacks. The problem with that is they're hard to come by and they're not cheap. Uh, I ended up paying $2 a piece for the ones that I'm going to put in here from Mauser, and that's probably just because they're gold plated. Um, I really don't see the need for gold plating on stuff like this. Uh, gold plating is great for uh, corrosion resistance, but let's face it, this stuff's going to be inside your house, you know, uh, temperature, humidity controlled. You're never going to have any problems with corrosion, and nickel plating is more than adequate. Um, so I think that $2 piece price is mostly for the gold plating, but I couldn't find any nickel plated with, with uh, any kind of um, proper coloring. I mean, I can find red, white, and yellow, and black all day in, in cheap forms, but nothing in uh, green and blue. And so we also wanted to have it, you know, I mean, we're going to have stereo auto output, of course. So we're going to leave the switch in. And then I'm going to add another TRS jack right here. And we're basically going to do uh, the same thing as the TRRS mod, except it's going to be audio only. Here's the uh, TRS jack. Let me get the focus in here. And then. This is the actual cord, TRS on one end and an RCA jacks on the other. And of course that will just go in there like that. So that takes care of the audio. And most likely the inside of this will become quite cramped with trying to add a J-Rock board and an RGB amplifier and an RGB PPU. But We'll see how it goes. Okay, first things first, uh, desolder the PPU and place Play Choice 10 RGB PPU in. And I like to test RGB first before hooking it, hooking it up to the component. That way, if anything goes wrong right away, I can do it in increments and then be sure everything's right as I do it. Okay, so I've already wired in the Play Choice PPU. And I've got it routed over to an NCS 2553 amp. And the sink is just simply going through a capacitor. We turn it on, make sure it works. And it seems to. No glitches, everything looks good. on and hook up the J-Rock board make sure that's all working. Okay so I'm finally ready to start in with this board that I had made and basically what this is is an RGB to component board specifically for Nintendo. Um, what I have down here at the bottom of the board is sockets and or uh, rows of uh, holes so I can put sockets and headers in there so that way when I install the RGB chip into a top loader or a Nintendo, all I really need to do is remove the PPU, install a socket, and then the headers sticking out the bottom of the board will just place or just um, go right into place into that socket. And then there will be another socket on the top of this board that the RGB PPU will go into. Um, so far I've been doing all that externally and I've had to bend up the RGB and sync pins on the RGB PPU 
and this will eliminate having to do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I have uh, my BA6594AF chip that I pulled from a Super Nintendo. I'm going to place that on the board up here and then there's two smaller ICs, little 8 pin um, SOICs and then there's just the three transistors and then the rest is all capacitors and resistors. Um, I limited it to 0805 sizes. Uh, anything smaller it's really hard to do with a, a regular soldering iron. But I should be able to get all this done by hand pretty easily so I'll get started on that. Okay, so far this really isn't going very well. I uh, got a couple mistakes already. Come on, camera. I don't know if you can see this, but I have a row of 1,000 ohm resistors right here. And I had to stand them up on their sides to get them to solder down to the pads. And I know the pads were. 0805 pads, they all were, but the resistors that Mauser sent me are marked in, on uh, on my order and on the baggie to be 0805, but they did not fit in those pads. They cover the whole pad, so it was almost impossible to solder to, and I don't have any other option right at the moment, so I just stood them up on their side. Maybe I'll get a close-up on, on that. And then also, I've got a 680K resistor over here. I did not get sent with the other stuff that I ordered. So what I'm going I'm to do is take a 680K resistor and just solder it right down to those pads for now just so I could get it um, working and, and try it out and see if it works. Okay, the resistor is on. And now one of the things is once the RGB chip is out I have these uh, machine turned inline sockets that I use on everything and the headers that I have are the square type and what I found is they will not mate up at all they're too big for those holes so I'm going to have to remove the old socket and replace it with a regular shitty dual wipe socket because these will actually go down in there and stay relatively well. Another problem with these damn headers is it want to go into the 
holes on the board. The pins are like a, a square pin. And what I need is a round pin. Maybe I'll just order some new headers. That's that's just not gonna go in there even if I really force it. Yeah. Take a look at something else here. Okay, since this is a prototype and I just wanted to get it going, I actually ended up drilling the holes out so I could put the header in there. And normally I wouldn't do that, but this board has almost zero traces on the bottom side, so I'm not worried about the headers connecting from the bottom pad over to any other pad except for one pad over here, and I think that's okay. So, and the drill was like a number 64 or something like that, and when I did drill out the holes, you could tell, you could look down in there and see there was no more um, through hole plating in there. So it's only going to connect on this top pad to whatever the trace is going to. Just something to keep in mind. But this is, since this is just a prototype and I just want to get it working, make sure it works, I'll go back and revise the board later so that I can just stick these headers directly in there. I looked on Mauser, I couldn't find any headers. Um, actually, they found, I found some headers from Smartboard, but there was no data sheets on them, so I don't know how big the pins are on them. I'm assuming they're pretty much all the same, so it's probably just better just to go ahead and redo the board itself so that I can use my cheap Chinese headers that I bought. You know, I bought like 400 of them for nothing. So I'll go ahead and solder this in and uh, proceed. Okay, that's basically it. All fitted up. That's what it's going to look like from the side. You can see it, it just misses that cap in there. And that's basically what I was after. That's fairly stiff. Doesn't look, doesn't feel like it's going to move up out of there. But I might still put some kind of a standoff or hot glue or something over here just to make sure. And then I just have to hook up my four wires over here for component output. And we'll see if it works. Okay, I've got it all hooked up. And we do have an image, except the colors aren't quite right. And to be honest, on the camera it looks better than it does in real life. But it looks like red and blue are just a little bit too bright. But what I'm curious of is the actual uh, chip uh, I'm using is a, a BA6594AF this is the RGB to component encoder chip uh, there are two versions uh, that are readily available from the Super Nintendo or other sources the other one is a BA6592F and what I'm curious of is if there is a different difference between the chips uh, like maybe all the uh, support components for this chip should be different and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up another one of these boards with a uh, 6592 and everything else will be the same and, and see what happens okay I decided since it was already wired up and everything I was just going to hot air off the uh, 6594 AF and solder on the 6592F and I did and the picture is perfect again so it looks like we need to stick with the 6592 at least for the Nintendo RGB to component but looks like I can uh, put it all together and do a final test okay well, a couple of last minute touches inside I put a huge glop of hot glue between the CPU and the RGB to component board just so it doesn't uh, come up and down and come out of this socket because it, it can and it will if it's not secured also I wanted to make note that with all that it's about three quarters of an inch from the top of the motherboard to the top of the RGB PPU so I just wanted to make note of that so if I ever go and put one of these into a front loader the clearance may be too much and I have to do something else about that anyway we can zip it up now okay it's all put together now just want to get a shot of the back of the console before I 
plug everything in. Uh, these are the three component jacks and where the RF jack uh, output used to be we now have a stereo audio output and then there's a switch here where the 3-4 channel select switch was is now a switch between uh, dual mono and fake stereo so <clears throat> if you'll notice the jacks are not spaced perfectly. I've talked about this a little bit on some forums. It's come up recently that some people think this doesn't look professional. Um, this is more of my personal preference. There is a, a plastic rib that goes right between the red and blue jack here. It's kind of a shell stiffening uh, addition and in order to make those jacks spaced perfectly apart you have to cut that off and I, I just didn't really want to do that and they work just fine as as it is just like that and this shell had already been modded for composite and stereo jacks before so instead of trying to find another shell uh, we just decided to go ahead and replace the jacks with uh, red green and blue um, but one of the ideas that I did have was to have a, uh, a TRRS connector in the 3-4 uh, channel select hole and then have the stereo audio in another TRS connector over here that way we just have two of those connectors now, I can't find the TRS connector the stereo audio out in gray but I, I do get the TRRS one in gray which looks nice so it would have been a bit contradictory but we could have found another shell and left that sticker on there and then had component video coming out of the TRRS and then audio out of the TRS so we would have had you know two of these sticking out along with the power you know so we just had another one of these over here which would have been that one so we, you know it would have it would have I think it would have looked pretty good but we didn't want to fiddle with trying to find another shell so uh, I use composite and stereo cables for component just because these are the nicest cables that I have currently uh, it really doesn't matter you know they're RCA jacks um, but let's see yellow went to green white went to blue red to red so that's what it's going to currently look like he does have the LED There's a, that's a 19 inch Sanyo LCD TV. And that's the picture we get out of it. It's super crisp and clear, almost as good as a emulator. Some of the lines you see on the camera are not really there. One of the things about RGB modding Nintendos is jail bars. And they are faintly, faintly there, but, I mean, it's so hard to tell. And they're really, really hard to get on camera that you'll, you'll never be bothered by it, really. So there you have it. Component modded top loader.